Welcome to Module 4, Cloud Economics Fundamentals. In this module, we'll explore the business value of cloud economics, covering TCO and beyond. Dive into the dynamics of fixed versus variable costs, on-premises planning, and licensing strategies. Next, unlock the essence of cost optimization through its five pillars, guiding you to efficient resource use and spending. Discover the pivotal role of automation and the advantages of managed AWS services in enhancing scalability and efficiency. Let's dive in. Let's talk about cloud economics. What's that all about, right? So, AWS breaks it down into two main parts. First up, we've got the pre-migration stuff. Think business value and total cost of ownership, TCO. It's like checking out how things look from AWS's point of view before diving into the cloud. A bit like window shopping, but for tech. Then comes the post-migration scene. Now, this is where the action is. How do you make the most of AWS once you're in? Whether you're running databases or applications, the game is all about optimizing costs. We're talking cost reduction and efficiency wizardry here, especially when it comes to dealing with infrastructure. In summary, Cloud economics is like the art of making smart moves before jumping into the cloud and then figuring out how to get the most bang for your buck once you're in. It's a bit like finding the best deals and then making sure you're getting your money's worth. To help you grasp the two aspects of cloud economics, let's use Mr. Lee's family relocation, the story from our previous module, as an analogy. Here's the scoop. So, cloud economics has two sides. Think of it like Mr. Lee's move. First, there's the pre-migration, where it's all about business value. It's like Mr. Lee deciding to move for a better job and a higher quality of life. Setting goals for a brighter future, aligning the move with the family's well-being. Total strategic thinking, right? Now, after the big move, we're in the post-migration phase, cost optimization. It's like Mr. Lee figuring out the finances in their new home, making sure they're spending smart. Now, let's zoom into cloud migration itself. In the pre-migration, it's all about these cool pillars. Cost savings, staff productivity, operational resilience, business agility, and sustainability. And in the post-migration, we've got these five pillars too. Right size, increase elasticity, leverage the right pricing model, optimize storage and measure, monitor, and improve. Hence, think of cloud economics like Mr. Lee's journey. First, it's the big decision for a better life, and then it's all about keeping things efficient and smart in the new place. The value of cloud extends beyond total cost of ownership or TCO reduction. AWS customers also see significant improvements in other areas, including staff productivity, operational resilience, business agility and sustainability. 1. Cost Savings or TCO it's a infrastructure cost savings and avoidance. For examples, improved supply demand matching, elastic cost base, and no hardware maintenance. 2. Increasing staff productivity through task-specific efficiency improvements, such as automation for maintenance, eliminating hardware tasks, boosting developer productivity. 3. Improve operational resilience by enhancing SLEs and reduced unplanned outages. For instances, lower risk profile, meeting regulatory compliance, and revenue gains from fewer outages. 4. Business agility by having faster deployment, reducing errors and allow the company to reduce time to market, enhanced operational agility, innovation at an accelerated pace. 5. Sustainability by minimizing environmental impact and lower carbon emissions through optimized cloud resource usage. Understanding total cost of ownership is crucial for informed decisions in infrastructure management. TCO involves a comprehensive analysis, comparing acquisition and operating costs for running an infrastructure environment on-premise versus AWS. The first cost component is server cost. This includes hardware expenses like servers, rack chassis, power distribution units, top-of-rack switches, and maintenance. In addition to hardware, there is software costs such as the operating system and virtualization licenses. Additionally, we must account for facilities costs like space, power, and cooling. Storage cost is the second cost component. 
It involves hardware expenses for storage disks and SAN or FC switches, software costs like backup solutions, and facilities costs. The third cost component is network cost. This includes expenses for network hardware like LAN switches, load balancers, bandwidth costs, software expenses for network monitoring, and facilities costs. IT labor costs are the fourth component. These encompass personnel costs for server administrators, virtualization administrators, storage administrators, network administrators, and support teams. The fifth cost component includes various extras. This may consist of expenses related to project planning, advisors, legal consultations, contractors, managed services, training, and the cost of capital. There are also other costs associated with business value such as cost of delays, risk premium, competitive abilities, governance and more. When calculating on-premises costs, consider both upfront capital expenses or fixed capital and ongoing operational expenses or variable expenses. For accurate comparisons, amortize hardware expenses over its five-year refresh cycle. Capacity forecasting is an essential aspect of IT infrastructure planning. The capacity forecasting for cloud is different than on-premises. Traditional on-premise data center capacity planning is challenging, involving predicting demand spikes, procuring equipment months in advance, and dealing with large upfront capital expenses, often requiring over-provisioning. A traditional on-premises planning cycle typically starts with predicting demand to plan for capacity. Next, the customer purchases, deploys and eventually uses and maintains their infrastructure. Owned infrastructure is usually provisioned to reflect peak usage not actual usage, so it involves a significant capital investment. Basically the customer has significant incremental depending on their purchase cycle. For example, the customer's purchase cycle could be every six months or every year. Yet, even the most comprehensive planning process might fail to predict actual as shown here. For example, you might have a customer who thought a new app was going to be popular so they provisioned more than they needed to be on the safe side. Or you might have a customer who did not forecast an increase in use of its platform resulting in under-provisioning which can then lead to the customer not delivering on their service level agreement. By not being able to deliver as promised the company's quality of service could come into question impacting the company's brand equity. By leveraging AWS your customers can save by provisioning only the required infrastructure at any given time even when demand is higher or lower than usual. Alright, let's go back to our story of Mr. Lee's family relocation from Seoul to the US. When it comes to shifting from the old school on-premises setups and traditional servers to AWS, it's a bit like Mr. Lee making some savvy decisions for his move. In Mr. Lee Migration he got to decide whether he wants to buy or rent an apartment in the U.S. Instead of dropping a ton of cash up front to own a place, he goes the smart route and decides to rent. Why? Well, renting gives him flexibility with regular, predictable payments. No need for a massive upfront investment. It's like living in the U.S. without being tied down to owning property. Mr. Lee gets the freedom to switch things up if life throws a curveball. In Cloud Migration you are trading capital expense for variable expense. Instead of throwing big bucks into setting up your own data centers and servers, the cloud lets you pay only for what you're using and when you're using it. It's like paying rent for the space you need, when you need it. This shift frees you up to focus on the cool stuff, like creating new products, without getting bogged down in the nitty-gritty of maintaining your own infrastructure. So, in a nutshell, cloud migration is like Mr. Lee renting his way into the American dream, minus the hefty upfront costs. It's all about flexibility, freedom, and doing your thing without the ownership headache. The buy or bring your own license versus Lee or license included are things that AWS throws at us. But don't worry, it's a bit like Mr. Lee figuring out what to do with his furniture when moving to the U.S. When Mr. Lee family relocating to the U.S., he must decide between bring your own furniture or buy off versus fully furnished apartment. If Mr. Lee still has decent furniture, and he's all about saving some cash, then, instead of buying new stuff, he decides to just jazz up the old furniture with new upholstery. It's a smart move, keeps things looking fresh without breaking the bank. On the flip side, 
Mr. Lee also thinks, hey, why bother hauling all my furniture across the globe? So, he goes for a fully furnished apartment in the U.S. No need to worry about packing and shipping, it's all ready to roll. In the cloud world, you gotta be smart about licenses too. Ignoring this stuff can jack up your costs, especially for things like Windows, SQL, or Oracle licenses. AWS gives you two options, file and Lee. Bring your own license is like bringing your own furniture. If you've got some killer license deals with a vendor, you can use them in the cloud. Big savings potential. License included is like moving into a fully furnished place. AWS provides the license as part of the hourly instance fee. If your stuff isn't running 24-7, this can save you a ton and keeps things hassle-free. So, whether you're jazzing up your old furniture or going for the fully furnished setup, it's all about optimizing costs and making your move, be it to a new home or the cloud, as smooth as possible. Cost optimization is a continual process of refinement and improvement over the span of a workload's life cycle to achieve business outcomes while minimizing costs and allowing organization to maximize its return on investment. Let's dive into the five pillars of cost optimization after migration. Right-sizing instances. Align provisioning with actual needs, optimizing costs without compromising performance. Methodically evaluate CPU, RAM, storage, and network usage to identify instances amenable to downsizing. Increase elasticity. Allows you to dynamically scale resources to match demand fluctuations using auto-scaling. This adaptive approach ensures resources align precisely with operational needs, promoting efficiency. Leverage the right pricing model. You can optimize costs by selecting the most suitable pricing model tailored to your workload's nature. AWS offers a spectrum of models, including saving plans, on-demand, spot, and reserved instances. Strategically align your model of choice to workload requirements. Optimize storage and fine-tune storage selections to achieve a harmonious balance between performance and cost. Opt for Amazon EBS throughput optimized HDD, SD1, for modest performance requirements, realizing a substantial 50% cost reduction. In data-intensive scenarios, S3 intelligent tiering supersedes S3 standard ensuring optimal cost efficiency. Measure, monitor and improve by establishing robust metrics, define targets, and conduct regular reviews to instill a disciplined approach. Implement practices such as turning off non-production instances during idle periods, enforce cost allocation tagging, and designate responsibility for cost optimization to individuals or teams. Automating the provisioning of resources is one of key advantage when transitioning to cloud versus traditional on-premises environments. It's enhancing operational efficiency and minimizes the potential for human errors. AWS CloudFormation is an infrastructure as code or IAC service that automates the provisioning and configuration of AWS resources through declarative templates, enabling efficient infrastructure management and deployment. Continuing our story on Mr. Lee family migration. The family employed a domestic helper for housekeeping, yet occasional lapses resulted in inconsistencies and errors. In their relocation to the U.S., Mr. Lee opted for a more automated and programmable solution in Los Angeles for apartment housekeeping. The absence of the domestic helper prompted investments in a robot vacuum, mopping system, and an irrigation system for plant care. These programmable systems ensure automation, efficient task execution, and error-free operations. In the traditional on-premises approach involves manual provisioning, a process known for its time-consuming nature, proneness to errors, and complexity in scaling operations. On the flip side, AWS CloudFormation emerges as a transformative solution. This service streamlines infrastructure deployment, offering notable efficiency gains. Automation reduces deployment time, ensures uniform configurations, minimizing errors, and simplifies the scalability of the infrastructure. Managed AWS services stand out as another key benefit in the realm of cloud computing, offering an advantage including increased productivity, automated scaling, and reduced costs. 
Here are the specific examples to illustrate these advantages. Let's start with Amazon RDS. With RDS, you can set up, operate, and scale a relational database in the cloud with just a few clicks. It removes inefficient and time-consuming database administrative tasks, eliminating the need to provision infrastructure or maintain software. Amazon ECS is another cost-saving solution. It allows you to run highly secure, reliable, and scalable containers. By launching containers on AWS at scale without worrying about the underlying infrastructure, organizations can reduce costs and improve efficiency. Automatic scaling and pay-as-you-go pricing across multiple AWS compute options make ECS a valuable tool for cost-conscious enterprises. Amazon EKS offers a trusted way to start, run, and scale Kubernetes. It leverages built-in integrations with AWS services such as EC2, VPC, IAM, EBS, and more. This simplifies the management of Kubernetes clusters and reduces costs with efficient compute resource provisioning and automatic Kubernetes application scaling. Finally, we have Amazon DynamoDB. This fast, flexible NoSQL database service provides single-digit millisecond performance at any scale. By focusing on innovation and optimizing costs with a fully managed serverless database, organizations can benefit from automatic scaling up and down to meet their specific needs, reducing the need for over-provisioned infrastructure. Congratulations! You have completed Module 4, AWS Cloud Economics Fundamentals.